think I'm beautiful. I think I'm beautiful. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the Netflix original series, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. This will, of course, take a look at episode four, which is called The Outside, which is directed by Anna Lily Amapore. Okay. Um, we are halfway through this first season. There's only eight episodes. We're on episode four. Uh, this is the second episode that released on October 26th. This is a wild episode. I thought the autopsy was wild. No, this is bonkers. This is an absolutely insane level of just craziness that is going on there's so much to talk about in this episode just it just kind of completely blows the mind this is an episode that would definitely be in tales from the crypt if that series were still running today um you can definitely tell that you know anna lily amapur is a very talented director apparently you know she directed that a girl walks home alone at night which is supposed to be a really good film i have not seen it but i hear really good things about it and this episode is is just it's a crazy crazy episode. It has a lot of uh, things behind it. It is very much in the vein of like a Twilight Zone episode, or you know, in the vein of Tales from the Crypt, which uh, you know, aiming towards in a lot of respects. This is very messagey in this kind of concept called the Outside, which makes a lot of sense. You could call it the Outsider if you think about it, because it is about an outsider, is about someone looking in from the outside. And that, of course, is a character played by Kate Micucci, who is a very talented, very funny actress in her own right. But uh, she's also an actor that's willing to uh, take chances on properties and ideas and concepts and uh, that's exactly what happens here this is a story of a character who lives in a world that is not part of not part of normal society she is a, an individual that loves her taxidermy she actually kills a, a, a duck in this in this episode and you know stuffs it and so, you know he tries to give it to as a gift uh, we see a lot of things on the wall her husband who's played by Martin Starr he's an individual that loves his wife but as this episode is trying to do it's it's basically showing that he's very detached from his wife he's tries to say that she's very pretty and beautiful but really he kind of puts her down in a lot of respects he's never really home he's a cop for the local pd he, he's just not a very good individual i think he's actually really good in this episode you know delivering that dry dialogue and delivery that he's known for doing but it's really interesting to see how he just kind of he's abusive but not really abusive in a lot of respects so he really kind of keeps her uh, on course for her just what she does in her normal life. And, you know, having Kate Micucci being the wife of the Martin Starr character is really interesting because Kate Micucci is a very interesting individual in her own right. She's very unique in her own ways of doing things. But she works in this bank with these really uh, pretty highfalutin women. They're like with their rich husbands. They, you know, they talk about the different times they, you know, have sex with their husbands and the different body parts and talk about, you know, their own boobs and stuff like that. It's It's very much like... Looking in a world where, you know, beauty and, you know, style and like, you know, clothing and makeup and everything that is looked upon as a woman is the detriment to their own personality. It kind of puts them into a box that, you know, Kate Micucci really wants to be in, but she can't be in because she feels very ugly and she feels very, you know, outside that box. That's why it's called the outside. And she's actually invited because this takes place during Christmas to go to a Christmas party and she mistakes a paper that she gets that says Gina on it as a secret Santa. So what she does is kill a bird and taxidermits it and of course uh, is going to give it to her as a gift. What she doesn't realize is when she goes to this place, she feels very out of place. She feels like the outsider. She feels like an individual who, you know, they talk about like, <laughs> you know, they talk about like sex toys and stuff like that. They talk about like the, the male anatomy and all that good stuff. I'm trying not to say the actual words so I don't get dinged and stuff like that for, you know, my content. But uh, basically, she really feels like she just wants to be in this world of just beauty and just opulence and all, you know, this house that she goes to, that's Gina's house, who's like the main kind of, you know, if you think about going to Mean Girls or something like that, she's like the the main Mean Girl, the Rachel McAdams character, and uh, she, you know, it's just this world is very much, you know, uh, plasticky in a lot of respects, but this is what Kate McCucci's character wants, and in the process, you know, because she mistakes it for being a secret Santa, what it really is is just going over for a Christmas party for women to talk about their men and stuff like that. And they get, they are each, each individual person is given a gift and you know, it's a bottle. It's this kind of kit of this like thing called aloe glow or something like that. It's a really expensive kit. They talk about it. And Kate Micucci mistakes, you know, this being a secret Santa. So she gives the gift of the duck. And of course the Gina is very like, um, okay, sure. Whatever. 
I'm gonna put that off to the side and we're gonna go back to the, the lotions and stuff like that. And of course, uh, Kate Micucci's character has to have some flaw, some problem with her apparently that she thinks. And she is uh, allergic to these lotions. She's absolutely allergic. She gets starts like you see, seeing this red spots on her face, on her arms. And she's basically sent home kind of like a pariah. These women like look down on her. It's all about eye of the beholder. Beauty is an eye of the beholder, but it's really just beauty is the natural ability to make women look pretty with makeup and stuff like that. It's it's a really kind of forceful, it's not really forceful, but it really has a huge message about, you know, not really looking at yourself, like wanting to look at yourself in a light that maybe you don't need to look at yourself in. Maybe you don't need to, you know, make your make up yourself up because you're still pretty on the outside no matter what you look like and that's what she doesn't believe and that's kind of her kind of her problem in this episode is just the simple fact that she wants to be beautiful and yet she doesn't realize she is beautiful and i know martin star's character really tries to help her with that but he's doing it in all the wrong ways his kind of messaging is muddled so you know what what ends up happening is this you know as she you know, starts to kind of spiral out of control in her beliefs. She thinks she sees a character played by Dan Stevens, who's like the spokesperson for this aloe uh, chemical or aloe lotion company. And if you've ever seen uh, the movie um, uh, The Game with Michael Douglas, the David Fincher movie, there's a point in that movie where the, the TV talks to him. And that's kind of what happens here, but it's played out almost like she's seeing, she's imagining the spokesperson, the Dan Stevens character, talking to her and i love what dan stevens is doing here i love what the writer and the director on uh lily and Amapur are doing with the character of dan stevens so they're making him you know be like this spokesperson but being kind of like another guy who's telling her she needs this lotion she needs this to make herself look beautiful she would be transformative and stuff like that and I thought that was a really fascinating idea, a really fascinating concept, because you start to see kind of how it starts to form this woman, this Kate Micucci character, and how she starts to kind of spiral out of control. You start to see how the lotion just really starts to kind of deform her skin, her body. It's really disgusting what starts happening. You see the kind of how uh, Martin Starr's character starts to see the, the worry look on his face. And it starts to lead to basically... She gets a box of this aloe glow or whatever you want to call it, and she basically starts to succumb herself to it. What's really cool is they do this thing where like the the bottles of the of the lotion start popping off one another, they start leaking out, kind of like it's its own little way of a, a creature that is going to form into Kate Mikuji's character, the kind of like what she wants and what you know she is, and what ends up starting to happen is it starts to turn into like this creature that's very beautiful looking like gooey creature that she, she kind of makes out with in the episode which is fascinating but it's kind of horrifying to look at but it's also kind of beautiful to look at it's very much a very ooey gooey type of situation the the way the sounds the the fully work in this episode are fantastic and you know you get to a point where you know she like she starts to succumb to this lotion this like kind of feeling of how she wants to look at herself in the world and she finally s confronts her husband because she has all this there's all this lotion over her and she has a scalpel in her hand and her husband you know is like we need to go see a doctor you are pretty you are beautiful just the way you are she doesn't want to see that and what does she do she stabs martin star in the head with the scalpel and as you would expect, somebody stabbed in the head of the scalpel. He's confused and not really sure what's going on. But he removes the scalpel and start, blood starts coming out. And he has to sit down. And he's trying to call the police department to talk, you know, tell him that he's in trouble. But you know he's not. This is one of those situations where you know he's not going to survive. Because in the beginning of the episode, there's a point where uh, Kate Micucci character sees a, uh, hears a sound. And she has an axe. So she takes it and then she calls her husband. Her husband's like, it's fine. You're just worried. Blah, 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 blah. Well, that axe comes into play later on when she hacks, her, when she axes her husband in the back and effectively kills him. And then uh, she goes up, and uh, the bat, the the creature, the the lotion creature is up there, and then forms into the bathtub. All the lotion forms into the bathtub, and of course, Kate Micucci's character goes into the bathtub and kind of envelops herself in the skin altering chemical. She comes out and then she taxidermies her husband. She stuffs, she takes out all the organs, stuffs her husband turns him into a uh, statue basically <laughs> and then she pretties herself up goes to the bank and all the all the women except for gina are like oh my god you were like heaven you're like if you were in the desert and you saw a mirage and all this stuff and 
you know, you watch how Kate Micucci's transformed, but you see, like, everybody finally kind of uh, accept her, which is a really important message to this episode. But what makes it really interesting, like, kind of how it, you know, shows her character at the end, like I said, it stares at her for a minute and a half, the camera does at her face, and she's, like, laughing, and, you know, she goes to, like, uh, expressionless, to scared, to laughing again. It really brings up the fact of, like, people are so into looks and ideas and you know the surface level views of the world and i you know how people kind of view like what is pretty what is beautiful what is smart what is interesting what is you know non-emptiness and she kind of she gets her wish but at what cost she loses all her morality she loses all her sense of worth she loses her you know her personal being and she does it at the, at the behest of like this chemical and this this liquid and you know this lotion that just kind of you know consumes her and that's that's the idea of like uh, you know commercialism and how it can uh, how it can shape someone and how it can affect someone and I, I found this episode masterful in just that respect I think it's a little longer than it needs to be I think. It is, you know, it's. I think it's only like an hour long, but it felt like it could be tightened up in some places where it kind of drags a little bit with her character. But the ultimate message there is absolutely stunning to watch. You know, this is uh, the writer of this episode, Haley Z. Boston. It was a writer on brand new uh, Cherry Flavor. I think that I think that's what the name of the series was on Netflix. And the way it's played out, the way it's written, the way Kate Micucci plays a character, which is just like I would give her an Emmy because she's so good in this episode. But it's one of those things where you know, just watching the TV or watching ads and watching YouTube or anything of that nature. We're so transfixed on like the Kardashians and what they look like, or we're transfixed on that beautiful world. And I say Kardashians because the Kardashians are very beautiful individuals, and we always are focused on like the materialistic things and stuff like that. And that's what this episode is doing. It's a very materialistic episode that is dealing with somebody's infatuation with it that can't look past the fact that that. The, the the people there they're they're the way they talk about their husbands the the world they live in they're very sad individuals they're very depressed individuals and she can't see that and this is very much like a, you know what you see Stephen King write about or you know just that nature of like you know looking past the window of who you are and the, the material materialistic stuff like that and I found that really fascinating so this is an incredible episode that does a lot and says a lot and is really horrifying but also. Uh, very important in the aspects of just like looking past that looking past that thing that need that you need so with that said if it weren't for the length if it didn't feel long I would give this a perfect 10 but this is a nine and a half out of 10 this is the best episode of the season so far I think this is an absolutely masterclass work of storytelling and just what it does for the time that it is even though it's a little long I think it absolutely masters it I think once again Kate Micucci should get an Emmy nomination for this particular situation he's absolutely fantastic I think Martin Starr is fantastic but he's more just a you know, supporting character and the the, you know, the women do a perfect job of just portraying that emptiness of the, the world around them and stuff like that. So definitely highly recommended for this series. Once again, proves that, you know, this is a, this is a series that I've been waiting for for a long time. This is why anthologies can work so perfectly. That's why Twilight Zone and that's why, you know, uh, Tales from the Crypt were so perfect because they could tell these stories in an hour and just be absolutely knock it out of the park with messaging and stuff. So, so with that said, that is going to be my take on episode four, which of course is The Outside, directed by uh, Anna Lily Amapur. Uh, once again, nine and a half out of ten. So, anyways, uh, comments below. What do you think of this episode? What was your overall thoughts? Did you like it as much as I did? If you didn't, that's perfectly all right. Let me know why. Otherwise, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button, the Joy Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell. Top to find coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.